Lights on away. Actually, bare shori. Maybe we should do this later, guys. <laughs> <laughs> no, just joking. Let's carry on <laughs> the race. <laughs> That's a reference. Who's crazy? Who's crazy? Like what? Bye, bye. Okay. Nice, We're guys. back. We're Let's back. go. I'm here with Zara Khan and Uzirik. I'm Omar Fasi Bashir. And before we get started, I want to talk about a little thing, a little butt easy, guys. I coined that. Make sure you subscribe because about 88% of people don't subscribe, but they watch our videos. Come on, come on, guys. Yeah, come but, on, come on. Zara Khan and Uzirik. Man, why? Why? What else do you need? We got a noose exactly but let's get on with the race which didn't get on with itself exactly. i think we should uh wait about 45 minutes before huh. we start this podcast no and then give you a 10 minute warning that we're yeah. about to start the podcast yeah <laughs> because what the hell was that guys i had spa flashbacks i was like what, what no. are your thoughts about it do you I, think they did it okay so my personal well, thing is i'm there's something wrong with it so fine at one point, I would believe if the race had started, they might have got a red flag because you could see the level of water was raising. It's a street a street race. It's in Monaco. So the water was rising a lot more. I'm pretty sure the wet tires would have struggled on that as yeah. well. Even Magnuson was saying that this is the most wet I've right, been in yeah. an F1 car. And I was like, you oh, ain't no. been to Belgium last year. That was Mick Schumacher, by the way. Just to uh, oh, okay. Yeah, that was, and Mick's only been in 28 races. Yeah. <laughs> so it's like, bro, like, relax. <laughs> uh, but I think I'm very old school in that manner of that thought that this is a dangerous sport. They all know what they've signed up for. Yeah. yeah, The race start wasn't wet. It was just drizzling. And the time that they spent and wasted. My always my biggest issue whenever they do this, that they did in, F- in Spa last year, is that, listen, we work seven days a week, all three of us, okay? In many ways, we have odd hours. We wait all week for this race. And then you waste our time like that. And on top of that, imagine people who went to Monaco to watch this race, man. People save up a lot of money just to go to Monaco to watch. It's not a cheap place. Like a pizza, yeah. a slice of pizza costs like 25 euros there. It's ridiculously expensive. Okay. So imagine being there, waiting an hour, and possibly not seeing a race again. I think it was just trash. I think it was really bad look for F1. They were lucky that they had a really good like 30 laps before the red flag that happened. But I agree with Martin Burton constantly saying, dude, they know what they're doing. This racing, it's not even that wet. Yeah. Every driver is saying, let's go race. It could have been a starting start as well. It could have been a times. starting start easily. Yeah. And on top of that, I believe that if they started the race, this a could have been... starting start? Uh, standing start. A standing standing st- st- I was like, what, what is a starting start? Standing oh, you thought, start. <laughs> I thought you standing, said starting start. Standing start. start. <laughs> well, I don't know. We'll check the footage on that. <laughs> uh, but I really agree with Martin Bruno. Like, they agreed to this, right? And on top of that, if they had started on time, this might have been one of the greatest F1 races in Monaco. Because you- Yeah, so if, at, if they had started on time, there would have been a red flag in between, definitely, because it was yeah. going to get so wet mm-hmm. eventually. So they're going to say, obviously, we were right. It got really wet. Mm-hmm. It was better to wait. And someone could have gotten hurt. So I understand that point of view completely. Yeah. But we could have had almost 10, 15 minutes of racing before that happened. But then again, considering safety wise, it is Monaco. And if you're going 100 miles an hour, even or 150 and you lose it, as you saw with Mick Schumacher's crash. But that happened yeah. in the dry. <laughs> yeah. So yeah. imagine, that, you know, like, science just had a big... Uh, because it's though. a street circuit, this, it's very narrow. Hmm. Uh, even if you're not going that fast, his car split in half. Yeah. in half no no I, I understand that and that's also with the design of the car we'll get on that later but i still think there was a possibility for the race to go on i don't think we had to wait one hour and 10 minutes for the race yeah. to go on we would have had about 40 I mean, 15 it, minutes it of racing in between started it night. was fine at the time but then it just got heavier in the middle because they waited yeah and then you just put yourself in limbo at that moment my biggest issue was that if they started the race it would have 10 15 laps great then they could have finished all 77 laps instead of giving yeah, us this, yeah. giving we, us we this, could have had all all racing laps. In, instead of giving us this formula e timing yeah. <laughs> like there's only ever one lap left so i was a bit disappointed on that end but thankfully we had a good 30 laps and it could watch. have been a very interesting race as well exactly we would have had 10 15 more laps even more than it already was uh prior to the yeah. red flag because after the red flag we know what happened yeah. <laughs> uh <laughs> but what do you guys think overall did you like anush what are your thoughts on that was the red flag avoidable avoidable yeah, there it's like on the barriers, right? No, no, I'm talking about just the start. We're still talking about the start. The start. Okay, yeah. we're still on the start. Uh, yeah, I mean, they could have done a formation laps a few more. Like, I mean, and then just go all racing throughout that because the water was clearing. But the only problem was that the rain started coming down heavier for them. Also, if you remember in Spa, uh, Bright Mara, I forgot his name, the safety car driver. He went out Bert in Spa. Bert, Bert, Bert Marlener, thank you very much. It was his birthday as well. Yeah. <laughs> at the Grand Prix. He went out in Spa and kept checking. This time yeah. they didn't even bother yeah, sending him. Yeah, they didn't him. send him out this time. So they had no information. And I think it's like two races on the trot. And in fact, that if you go back to qualifying the worst red flag call i've ever seen in qualifying yuki sonoda hits the barrier tike 
There's a little a bit puncture. of puncture. A little puncture. Well, not even not a puncture, by the way. It's just the front, the wheel covers, the new wheel cover just pieces off. So okay. it wasn't entirely a puncture. It was a slow okay. puncture. So it wasn't like he was like just dribbling along. Like it was just the worst F1 calls I've seen. And further on the race, we saw poor, more race direction. Uh, we poor. saw a TV direction that was really yeah. trash. Once yes, again. exactly. Uh, which is which is a constant in Monaco, if you remember last year. <laughs> we had the Sebastian Vettel Lance Stroll moment. That happened in free practice if you watch FP3 as well. I by saw. The way. <laughs> I saw that happened too. again. Uh, there was poor direction in both F- F1 TV and F1 race direction. I really thought that F1 TV also missed out. Whenever there was a yellow flag, I'm like, yeah, we right. saw yeah, <laughs> zero <laughs> out of 20 yellow flags. Yeah. Exactly. We have no idea what happened. I mean, it took so long for them to show Mick as well. Yeah. You didn't know what happened to Mick as well. So it was worrying as well in that manner. But overall, once the race started, guys, I think we were in for a good one because you got to see drivers at their best. Yeah. Nobody was making, hitting the barriers until obviously make it happen. But you got to see car control. You got to see incredible saves. You got to yeah. see some battles. You saw this. And you get- got to see so much variation of strategy. We exactly. had at one point uh, drivers out on full wets, inters, slicks, and uh, yeah, all three, all, all three, three strategies, all three, all three yeah. strategies. And it was incredible because prior to their, uh, prior to those and it's pit stops as well, you got to see some racing as well. Yeah. Uh, I predicted this on the group as well. I said, get expect close racing, but no overtakes. Yeah. Because the cars can definitely follow each other this time, but, they but they're pass. still too wide. Yeah. Like Pajero size. They yeah. need a three second advantage. The cars have gone, advantage they've gone really wide uh, in hmm. the past six, seven years. If you remember back to the 2010s, the early 2010s, the cars were much narrower than this. And I feel like in tighter tracks, it's much e- easier to overtake. It would have been much easier to overtake. And you saw more overtakes before, uh, about a decade ago in Formula One at Monaco. Yeah. Yeah, if you remember the uh, the famous Michael Schumacher overtake over yeah. the line as well, which he got a penalty for, unfortunately. <laughs> but it, again, it was possible then the cars could squeeze through. And I think 2008 is one of my favorite years in Monaco because you got to see those cars just like yeah. rotate incredible set speeds. But I still think it was cool to see close racing. I still think it, it gave a reason for Monaco to stay on the calendar. Definitely. Because I think this is the race we needed. We yeah. needed a wet Monaco yeah. race for St- Stefano Domincelli, whatever his name is, the CEO of F1, to be convinced. Domencali. To be convinced to keep this on the calendar, yeah. which is very worrying. I didn't know that they don't have a agreement for next year. They don't. And it's not like Monaco pays much. It pays, it pays some, but it doesn't pay as much. They bring their own sponsors as well. Hmm. So Monaco is just one of those tracks that just gets by because of their history. But I'm glad we had a good race here hmm. because we might get to keep Monaco. I think we'll get to keep Monaco definitely. Yeah. Because there's it's a, it's a legacy track. Despite so. how much they might want to change it, there's just so so much history involved in the Monaco GP. I mean, I don't want to jump to the end of the race, but Checo was crying. Like it yeah. means something, this track, man. Yeah. You so can't it's, replace it's a it. Crown, man. Exactly. And as we're speaking, I was about to watch the Indy 500 after the spot, but it went <laughs> over time. That's another race that is accompanying that race. As yeah. well. Like It always happens. You watch Monaco, and then, then you, you watch, watch Indy 500. The... It's always gone together. So you can't get rid of it's it. It's also man. just like Paris said that after your home race, this is probably the most important race in any mm-hmm. driver's career to win. So if you're going to knock that out of the calendar, then I don't know what you're going to do. I don't know, man. Let's hope they don't because what are you going to do with a uh, race? I know what they're going to do. They're going to have another Formula 1 race in the US of A. Where will Alaska reach Alaska? Every place. I mean, there was talk of like 40, 50 races happening in, uh, in the calendar year, which I thought was ridiculous uh, in an interview. Nah, said. Perez even says that I'm not doing more than 23 races <laughs> yeah, in a year. RIP <laughs> driver next. Ah, <laughs> uh, dude, driver next and driver crew as well, like pit crew. Get on. Goodbye, yeah. Socha. They don't get to see their family, man. They don't go on private jets all the time yeah but let's move on with the race (laughs) uh when the race really hit its peak was when gasly pitted and everyone's like (laughs) yeah because gasly my god he gave us some of the sweetest overtakes in the past six seven years i'd say in monaco the coolest one we saw last year and multiple multiple in one race dude that overtake on uh joe in the casino oh brilliant what a beautiful overtake i screamed i was like oh my god yes (laughs) this is so good what did you guys think of his uh, performance as well? It was great. Uh, one, it got to give us a lot of, uh, not controversy, but d- like differentiation in terms of the strategies that people called afterwards. You saw other people like Seb go in very mm-hmm. early because of the timings, because he was doing purples uh, the lap before Seb and a few of the others came in. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think this is the best, one of the best racing that I've seen in Monaco in a few years. I th- think it was last, the last time Hamilton won. 
uh, we got to see like good close racing be- between Hamilton and Max Verstappen. Oh, okay. Remember that lunch 2019, yes. on the final lap? Yes. Yeah. Uh, so yeah, I think after that, this is the best racing I've seen. Because apart from that, the the year Ricardo won or the year Seb won, <laughs> it was just like you're following each other, but there's like no genuine attempts to yeah. overtake. Exactly. And we saw a lot of that later in the race. as well because of Fernando and his uh antics I wouldn't say DRS train but the the Fernando train the DRS wasn't even allowed yeah. for the longest time yeah. I don't think it was actually allowed for the entire race No there no, it was, was yeah, at, at, at the point at, the end, at yeah. very late like yeah, it yeah. took them like a very long laps or something into it Yeah exactly sorry but it took them a very long for them to do that but when Gasly pitted then we saw Ocon Hamilton battle as well during that time yep. as well and Ocon got a penalty and yep. due to that Ocon is out of the points is out of the points Seb Vettel gets a point there. and so <laughs> does Valtteri Bottas man that's yeah. great i'm so happy to get i i definitely didn't think they both deserved points yeah. as did Gasly it Gass. was a very clean race for them mm-hmm. uh it was a race where you don't see them much on the tv but like you know they're just slowly getting by getting it done making sure they're in the top yeah. 10 staying clean out of each other's way barring uh, Sebastian Vettel's uh Um, yeah, he locked up into turn yeah, one. Yeah, he yeah. went off. Unfortunately, that's how Ocon. One of the it. one of the yellow flags that we didn't see. Yeah, <laughs> that's how Ocon got. It. I realized it was him being overtaken when oh, I yeah, saw the I switch yep. on the timing sheets. But yeah, it was a good. It was a cool battle between Ocon and Hamilton as much as it could have happened. Yeah, I do think Ocon did shut the door way too multiple yeah. times. I he think he could have a bit... taken a wider line. I think he just shut the door uh, early and like very decisively. Hmm. where he just wanted to be in front and not go out of the out of turn one side to side and then having to battle it out in the straight exactly so i think it was a deserved penalty yeah. but apart from that the defensive work after that was brilliant by ocon as well hmm. he was shutting the door any other way he could yeah uh so yeah brilliant drive defensive apart from work that of alonso was really good <laughs> Yeah, oh, that's magic. <laughs> I mean, that's Alonso. That's, yeah, that's <laughs> magic. Is... That's not that was that wasn't tough for him. Yeah. It wasn't like Hamilton got in and tried hmm. could overtake or made lunge or nothing. Yeah. There yeah. was nothing. Alcon was really good, but in fairness, nobody to overtake here. There was I mean, there was a train afterwards. Nothing yeah. happened. We didn't see anyone. Was Gasly was the only one who overtook someone. Yeah, and that was only prior to the red flag. Yeah, so we didn't see anything. But the biggest talking point after the Alcon uh, Hamilton battle, after the incredible save by Science. Uh, that was actually after the pits as well, yeah. but uh, was lap seventeen. So when Perez pitted for inters, this I believe Fry is probably the biggest blunder, and this might cost them down the championship as one of their definitely for not just for driver championship, but remember the constructor championship is very close right this now. Stupid. It was horrendously stupid. When Paris, even if you wanted to take the the strategy that you that you took with uh, Charles, bringing him in while Sainz Sainz is in the pits and. Charles is bound to waste two to three seconds because he's t- so close to him. Was was really stupid at that point, uh, and you could see the anger and despair in Charles' voice. <laughs> yeah. Oh, sorry. You could hear <laughs> yeah. the despair in his voice, but he was so angry, uh, and deservedly so. Yeah. So basically, when Paris pitted, I wanted to make a point. This was a chance for Fry to pit to react to them to put Leclerc in that pitting and then make sure he can get the better of of yeah. Paris. Afterwards. Yeah, and you're already ahead. Just take the same yeah. strategy, and you're good. And we've seen Mercedes do this time and time and time again throughout the years of <laughs> dominance that they had. Yeah, they would just copy the exact strategy that the other guy was on, and you're set because mm. you're already ahead. Exactly, and the worst part is I think Leclerc deserved this more than anything because he was four or five seconds yeah. ahead of Sainz, who was in P2. It was a, it was a dominant uh, drive up until that point. And usually we always talk about how Leclerc is actually not that great in the wet. Yeah, this time he was fantastic. Was he was the best. Safe, uh, even even during uh, practice and qualifying, you would see him not get too close uh, to the barriers a lot of times, mm. as compared to the other other drivers. So he was keeping some in the tank, but even despite that, despite staying safe, playing it safe, making sure that there's no repeat of twenty one, twenty nineteen, twenty eighteen, none of that. Even twenty seventeen, he was still setting purples <laughs> in in P one, P two, P three, qualifying everything. Yeah, exactly. So it was a great, a very mature drive by him. And to that point of how he was driving around this track, everyone else was like giving a little. <laughs> like yeah. so they kind of barriers yeah. every single these shots of Checo getting so close to the barrier. Even during the race, uh, there was a sh- this shot of Mick. Mick, yes. And that was that was the closest I've seen. Like that was grazing the sidewall. Like it great. didn't move, but it was yeah. so close to it. Like the wind maybe like <laughs> yeah. like moved it, but nothing else. But regardless, this was a huge blunder for because remember we weren't here for last uh, last podcast because our audio files got deleted unfortunately. Sorry for that. We'll make sure that doesn't happen anymore. We got a hard drive now. <laughs> But 
the issue was that um, Leclerc just he deserved this victory, deserved it so much, and it, we wanted the curse to be lifted. Yeah, they had to be stopped. But Ferrari to the rescue, huh? <laughs> Ferrari strategists like they had the slow button on. Like they didn't react. Slow button I, on. I actually want to like go and see like what happened because mm. like why did you call him in? in that sense and then just realize that oh this guy was on the inters stop. for about three or four laps and that's it's five it. seconds in, ahead. inters was fine you calling him for inters you covered him off if he had three or four maps more he would no, have still he, been if, ahead. if he if they had to put him on the inters they had to go much earlier than that yeah they waited first Lord why was go on inters waited. for three laps just uh, in that case just wait to go to uh, the slick straight straight mm. away just like you were doing for signs so I think if they wanted to pit for enters earlier was the time when Checo had pitted. Yeah, and when 80% of the people who, who start on pole finish first in Monaco. And that too, when a driver in Q3 before that Paris and <laughs> science fiasco yeah. was three tenths up on his previous time, just in sector one. Yeah. He didn't even reach the tunnel by then. Um, it's just a shame that happened. And Red Bull just grabbed the opportunity, props to them. They seized the opportunity. They got Ferrari, caught them red-handed. And I said this before earlier in the season. I think it was the third or fourth race that I don't trust Ferrari. <laughs> I can trust Charles with this, but I, you cannot trust this team. They make these decisions time and time and time again. You saw it years on end with Fernando, with for Seb, for, for Raikkonen, for everyone. This team keeps doing this thing. Hmm. They, they don't deserve championships. I mean, this happened again. Uh, if you re- go back when the bigot blunder happened, obviously there's a Ricardo one where he didn't have tires. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I think yeah. that was the biggest mark. Before that was 2008 when uh, McLaren beat uh, Ferrari, Massa, yeah. to the line. And again, it was a strategy blunder there. And it was yeah. Ferrari again. So this has been a year's thing. I don't think it's fair to blame Matteo Benotto because I saw the comments being all clown, 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 clown <laughs> emojis. Yes, he is a team principal, but there's an entire strategy yeah, team yeah. behind it. There's an engineer. He's not be- calling the shots at that point. Yeah, this, that's mostly what, he relies on his team. At that yeah, moment yeah. For the on the information that's given to him. Exactly. So it's never the team principal saying, "Okay, pit now." It's like James Fowles. It's like JP. It's all those people yeah. who are behind the scenes doing the work in the factory. But hundreds this, of miles away this needs to be an eye opener right i mean the last race was an eye opener in a way this should this was pressure been. has the f- last apart from 15 else? years not been an eye opener for these guys yeah. <laughs> no i mean like i mean you now have the car you can do it you are the fastest car on the grid yeah, definitely hands down but two races you've lost to win hmm. and That's this is this something. is where like maturity comes in we drive we talk a lot about driver maturity and how you know we, we need championship level drivers to be more mature in situations like for example max was today it was, I was gonna it was say, really mature of him yeah. to not make a lunge to make sure that if he's getting p3 p3 is good for now because the he's championship ahead. matters the 22 23 races in this season yeah. matter not the position not second and third within monaco and then when you you deserve and you expect to see the same kind of maturity within team leaders and strategists and all the all the backside of formula one and yeah. that's something we we hardly, I mean, yeah, Ferrari gets things right at times also. And we praised them at the start of the season for getting a couple of calls right. Strategy was good. Yeah, yeah. it's good. But then again, they make these blunders. And if, if they keep making these blunders, then it's going to be really hard to win a championship. And it's costly blunders. It's not yeah. as if like, oh, they lost a This is from lap. P1 to P4. This is yeah. huge. Yeah. And again, the curse has not been lifted, I'd say. <laughs> it's still I not. I mean, he finished. That's good. <laughs> it's a good start. Yeah. Next year, you'll get him. <laughs> Uh, but then another big moment happened after all this fiasco with Ferrari that they swapped positions and the Red Bulls were somehow P1, P3 now and Perez was looking to win the race. We had another red flag and this time it was not because you did rain. It was due to a massive crash, which it was hard in my mouth moment when I saw that yeah. car split. Yep. Uh, and they showed it for about half a second and then, and then for the next 20 seconds, they didn't show. Yeah, they showed came back. Yeah, the shirt yeah. K-Mag being they like... They start oh. showing K-Mag. I was like, yo, this is the wrong him. driver, man. Also, like, why is K-Mag out of this car? Yeah, <laughs> like, there's, no radio, there's no radio. There's no nothing. There's no checkup. I was like, he's control. already out? Yeah. What's happening? I, th- I, was like, I thought it was Mick crash. Oh, it's K-Mag who crashed. But they turned out it was Mick. And then Mick's radio pops up and says, yeah, I'm okay. And I was like, okay. To be fair... If it was McLaren, <laughs> is the car okay? Oh, <laughs> uh, yeah. That's something um, people... They, they it out, though. Like, yeah, there was a miscommunication yeah. in that part. It was fine. I don't think we have to blame people that much for that. This is one of those. Uh, did, did, did who hit us? Did Erickson hit did us? Erickson yeah. moments <laughs> where you're exactly. talking about something else. Exactly. But um, that crash looked horrifying. It wasn't actually that fast because yeah. he lost 
the uh, speed the rear, yeah. quite quickly. Yep. And but the crash still happened in this yeah. car split. It just ricocheted. The rear went in really hard. Yeah. And, and all, I think there's, this is, you were talking about some design flaw. So it's not a design flaw. It's actually designed to break up apart now. Okay. So after Grosjean's crash, which was horrifying in 2020, right? When the car split yeah. open and the flames came out, right? This time, if you notice, the engine pipe was also out. Yeah. So oh, it's okay. part of those designs that they're doing to make it safer. So it's oh, designed. So the car to, doesn't blow up. Yeah. So the car also also splits to make sure the driver is safe. Yeah. So that if any type of energy or motion is going yeah. through that car, the rear goes off. Yep. To make sure it dissipates. Okay. So that was actually uh, a mark of great safety again of F1, which okay. is something I think we can pray. But it was a hard crash. If exactly. it reached the limits that are needed yeah. to exactly. make sure that the car breaks up. To keep again, it proves process. how much downforce is going on in those tracks, especially in track like Monaco, man. And that too was in the dry. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, but besides the implications of safety and the fact that that crash is horrifying, Mickey boy, man, what you doing? I don't know. What you doing? The, I feel like we expect a lot from Mick. Uh, uh, naturally, we do when someone has the name of Schumacher. Yeah. And when someone had the name of Senna, Bruno Senna, yeah. we expect yeah, stuff yeah. from them. Yeah. It's I mean, not. It's, it's going it's, much better. Than <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Bruno Senna did that again. Uh, but again, like if you go back in history, we have father and sons mm. who have done really well. Nico, Rosa, Carlos Sainz, Carlos not Sainz. Formula One, but but yeah, again, yeah. again, much, we saw his dad's rally skills. Today. Exactly, the, <laughs> yeah. the pit straight, incredible save, man. It was it was uh, another heart in your mouth yeah. moment. You thought, oh, he's gone, and you thought Sainz got gore bad, you yeah. know. Okay? Yeah, but, but like apart from just the the sh the name Schumacher, it's also what he's done. Throughout his junior yes, career, exactly. yeah, exactly. He's, he's a performer. Formula Three champion. He's Formula Two champion. Even last year, you could see that he was doing well compared to his teammate. But I don't know. Maybe he's. It's that same kind of syndrome that he had in junior formulas, where the the first season was a bit trash, and then the second season was really good. Uh, so maybe he's just getting used to the car right now. But I don't mm. know how much time. You get right, in yeah. Formula One. No, I don't think also, you can get an extra year. Forget about the time, bro. Look at the money they're spending on his cars yeah, to fix that's it. Millions, just especially this, for a team like Haas. In, in the first seven races. Yeah, and this one is definitely a million. It's like the fourth crash that he had. Exactly, and the last big one he had was in Jeddah. Yeah, which is a huge crash. Again, yeah. all his fault. Yep. Uh, then we go back to Miami. All his fault. It was not Vettel's yeah, fault. These it were was all his fault. Unprovoked. This is all his mistakes. And if he doesn't get his act together, I I'll find it a hard case to make a case. Uh, I find it hard to make a case for him to be in F1 next year. Yeah, definitely. When there's so many other drivers who deserve to be in F1. Yeah. So I'm a bit worried for him. And also bad day for Haas because as we talked about, Magnussen yeah. was already out of the car. He had a <laughs> water pu water pump issue, water pressure oh, issue. Okay. So he was, out of, he was already in the pits. That's where the shot came from. But let's hope Mick gets his act together. Otherwise, I think it's Sayonado for him. Yep. So not much we can do. Then the red flag happened. First, they got the virtual safety car. Then they got the safety car. And then they got I did not understand the virtual safety car. I was like, what? What? Bro, really? Do you see this Bridge? crash? <laughs> There's a like car in half. <laughs> that's in two pieces. Yeah. What are you all doing? Exactly. And there's a barrier that's completely destroyed. Yeah. You can see that the water pumped out. So you need VSC to fix that. VSC safety car red flag. <laughs> like, come on. They're just trying to make sure they press all the buttons. <laughs> One, two, three. But that was a bad call by the race directors. Again, one of the poor race guys. Also, also, prior to this, we also had that fiasco where we thought uh, Verstappen, uh, or we thought Paris at first, had cut the yeah, uh, yeah the pit yeah, lane line. Pit lane. <laughs> uh, Both of them, actually. No, yeah. Paris was actually not caught. It was a mistake they called it. It was actually Verstappen. So there's no footage okay. of Paris actually going. It was uh, Verstappen at the very oh, they end. they showed the same footage for both of them? Yeah, it was Verstappen. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, yeah, Verstappen. It wasn't okay. actually Paris. Dope. Yeah. <laughs> F1 TV direction in Monaco. Uh, the issue is that Monaco also says that we will do the FA, uh, race direction. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Dude, just get a team, fly them around. It's cheaper <laughs> <laughs> and it's better for you. And get F1 stewards who are at the same at every race. Otherwise, you get these type of nonsense all the time. Yeah. But prior after that, we got to pit the cars. You got to change tires. Lewis got to change his uh, front wing. So everything was put into motion for a typical Monaco race. And the interesting part was that for someone like Leclerc, he got an opportunity. He got an opportunity. It's a bit late <laughs> in the day. Uh, we've, been, we've been waiting all the time. It's a long race. Um, excuse Make him. Sure you I, put this in. Yeah, 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 he's definitely gonna be in. <laughs> excuse him. For audio so. listeners, he was yawning. <laughs> it didn't come with the audio. No, no, it didn't come. But yeah, it was a so, silent yawn. So, okay. But. Is it's kind of, kind of weird if you think about it that Leclerc was able to get out of the car and talk to his team and say, "Bro, yo, <laughs> 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 like, was, uh, 
Remember that Michael Schumacher meme where he's like taking off his helmet, uh, going Spa over to talk to uh, David Coulthard. David Coulthard. <laughs> <laughs> they put up that someone put up that meme and, and wrote Charles in the middle of the race going to talk to Benotto. <laughs> <laughs> But uh, I actually made sure I listened to some of the interviews afterwards, and Leclerc was saying that no, I just went up and calmed myself down, which okay. is a good sign. Yeah, because uh, obviously we. Yeah, heard, he went to the garage. He was just uh, standing alone. As yeah, well. he didn't want to talk to anyone, which is understandable. Yeah. I mean, we were thinking that he would just be like. He knew he'd lost. Where is Benotto? I need to. <laughs> yeah. Give them a like, good thing. I, I just want to talk to you, bro. <laughs> hey, I just want. Like, I just want to talk. <laughs> yeah, four eyes. <laughs> Come here. Uh, so I the, just want to talk. <laughs> uh, yeah, they can put more weight on, so he's definitely got more muscles this time. But uh, it was weird to see that happen as well, and it was weird to see all these like uh, like wedding. <laughs> Stalls going up <laughs> over the cars as well, but <laughs> after the, <laughs> <huh>? <laughs> exactly, I know, I know. But uh, also weird part, like Lewis changed helmets. <laughs> really? Yeah, yeah, I didn't know. Yeah, that. Yeah, 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 so he got rid of that really cool white purple helmet. He, he got. got his usual one. Yeah, he got the usual one. I think I had to do the visor or something. Oh, okay. Only driver to ever do that in an F1 race. Yes, first helmet. time they've seen that. Yes. Uh, first time we also I personally seen any timer go on after yeah yeah uh, we were like what <laughs> <I was> like, <laughs> didn't we have a, a timer at Spa last year no it doesn't count <laughs> <laughs> we didn't that, even have a timer that then. race doesn't yeah. exist it, it's not it didn't happen they didn't get points okay <laughs> I'm sorry Russell I know it's your first podium but <laughs> no <laughs> it didn't count but um, after first the race podium first points was it right yes yes yeah. was it first points as well yeah first points wasn't I remember him crying when he got the first points. It was in Spa. It was in Spa. No, I don't know. Okay. I believe last Hung- season is Hungary's is when they got their first points. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, the, the race yeah, Hung- yeah. Hungary is before was, the, yeah, uh, yeah. the the summer Latifi, break. Yeah, Latifi yeah. was ahead of him, and then he was behind. Yeah. He was, that was his first. Yeah, points, like yeah. I remember Russell crying yeah. uh, really profusely. But the race that uh, Lewis started alone. Yes. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I can't wait till we get to Hungary this time again, man. Ocon won that race, if you remember. <laughs> yes. Uh, but going on to after that, we were set up for a typical Monaco race. The, uh, the tires were also interesting between the two. Yeah, I mean, it's not like it was a bad race, yeah, but it was yeah. a typical race as in no overtakes, yeah. right? This time, at least we got close racing and a couple of strategy, and we saw the top four cars just, you know, <laughs> ass to face, basically, yeah. <laughs> like neck to neck. It was neck. a human centipede. Yeah, exactly. And at one point, you just saw these four cars just, just going at it together, like no overtakes, no chance. Yeah. No one's going to the right side to overtake. Um, so no one's taking I any chances. I just wish it was just a little bit wider. Or the cars the were a little bit so less yeah, wider. So this just you know where they could make a lunge. Yeah. Even if it resulted in like an accident out of care. <laughs> just like, you know, they try. Yeah. So But there's this, too much at stake. If this would have happened in Spa, this would have been a great race. <laughs> no, no. I'm expecting <laughs> great races throughout the year now. Yeah. yeah. If the cars can follow that close. That and closely, Mercedes yeah. has got a better uh, straight line speed now. So I because at one point... Prior to the red flag, you saw Mercedes was like 13 seconds faster yeah. than everyone. They're like, Russell's 13 seconds faster. Hamilton's 11 seconds faster. What's going on? Because it showed in the race, in the wet, that Mercedes have yeah. a decent car. Yep. And they've got two drivers who are very good in the wet as well. We know that for a fact. Spa last year. George Russell once again. Yeah, George Russell once again. I will say George Russell, again, had a bit of luck on his side. <laughs> yeah. He's got Lady Luck and Lewis Hamilton does not have Lady Luck this time. It's changed. It's, it's uh, definitely uh, Lewis has had all the luck <laughs> he could have gotten in his entire life. I know, I know. <laughs> but it's, it's still a point to make. That even this time, he was like, I don't have any luck now. <laughs> yeah. He said that in an interview. Uh, What did you change, Lewis? <laughs> I mean, the car changed pretty much. That's really that's what changed. He's just I mean, gonna go on and like win a race now. <laughs> There's gonna be one race where like everything goes his way. Yeah, for Russell's definitely for sure. Oh, you're talking about Lewis? Yeah, yeah. I'm hoping. I'm expecting. But see that Jitega. <laughs> <laughs> like just the four cars in the front just yeah. crash into Because each other. So far, he's never had a season that he hasn't won a race. That's what I was thinking about as a fan of him. I really want him to keep that record. That is a yeah. cool ass record, He's man. Won every single. Because if you think about the season when everyone's like, "Oh, this it's done. Lewis is over. Twenty four. Uh, he'll win one race. <laughs> yeah, he but he won that one race in <laughs> yeah. Hungary. So I'm really looking forward to that on Hungary Grand Prix and hoping that Lewis keeps that record. But you know, regardless, he doesn't need to keep it to prove himself. But uh, he is a seven-time world champion. Yeah, he's got the most all. race wins, rows and most poles as well. Most everything. <laughs> uh, also, he'll get the most laps. He'll it, get. He'll th- probably won't get most laps. No, uh, uh, Alonso. He won 14 championships. Alonso, and then like. Also, imagine Verstappen and uh, Kimi, who raced for so many years. No, imagine Verstappen and uh, Leclerc reaching that age. 
Yeah. Yeah. Because they started young, man. Yeah. Imagine Lando Much Norris <laughs> reaching that age. They're Max, gonna... especially. Max, Max came in way too young. Even, 17. Even Stroll. Yeah. <laughs> uh, How old was Stroll? Uh, 17 as well. Oh, okay. Oh, okay. I believe Max was 16. Max was 16 when Stroll. he tested an F1 car. Yeah, so Stroll was 17, I believe, when he first joined yeah, F1. He will forever be the youngest driver. Yes, yeah. exactly. And um, But pretty much after that, we just saw a train. Yep. But there was two pointers. Was that Fernando Alonso train. Yeah. <laughs> Please do, do not forget. This. Uh, of course, I'm not going to forget my boy Alonso. He's my favorite driver. Alonso, slow, fast, <laughs> slow, fast. He was like just toying with Hamilton. Like, Ana, nee, nee, sorry, I'm going to Like, he just couldn't do anything. And obviously, overtaking is pretty much impossible here. Uh, just move that over there, by the way. <laughs> sorry. Uh, but okay. uh, Alonso doing a great job defending as well. Uh, but beyond that, I want to talk about Norris. Fastest lap. Fastest lap. The man had tonsillitis the previous race and this Guard race. P6 last time? Yeah, dude. Like, it, when I saw an interview after qualifying, it looked like someone put that Snapchat sad filter on him <laughs> perpetually. <laughs> like, he just looked sad. He looked so de- dejected because he was so sick. Yet, he beat the man, Ricardo, confidently. Just Again, Ricardo easily. P13. Yeah, yeah P13. Ricardo P13. I, I don't know what to say about that, man. It's, it's, hard. it's just not working out. So I don't know what it is, if it's, if it's confidence, what is it? I, I don't understand. I don't know. It's just not working out. And This is the second season. It's so weird to see that as well, because this is the man who was poised to be the next big thing. Yeah. He was supposed to be the guy who's going to be smiling at the podiums all the time and making people happy, bringing new fans on. But no one... And really Norris ca- isn't even regarded as that great of a driver. Like, I mean, he definitely he's is. he's consistent, though. But he's, uh, yeah, yeah, he's definitely not... When, he, when like, you talk about the you, young drivers, yeah, like Yeah, you Leclerc. wouldn't consider him to be as good as... Leclerc. Leclerc or Max. Or even Russell. Or even Russell. Yeah. In that I feel like yes. in terms of perception, there's always like a he's there at one level and he's like a step below. He's really, really good. Generationally good, but mm-hmm. like just a little bit beyond. But then Ricardo still can't like keep up. Where and it's not even keep up, he's really far behind. Yeah, that's my biggest concern as well as a fan of his. Like and just watching, you don't want to see a driver like that. Zach Brown has mentioned it. Like, yeah, I was going to get to are, that. Are... So Zach Brown specifically said these things that there are things in the contract that don't allow... Yes, to McLaren called it. <laughs> so there yeah, are things... 2023. Thing... Yeah. <laughs> there Keep are... this. Keep I mentioned this. it last podcast, which we didn't hear. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. There's a lot of things we talked yeah. about in that podcast. That was pretty long as well. Uh, but Zach Brown, going back to that, he specifically talked about one thing, saying there are mechanisms... And he says mechanisms in the contract that don't allow us to stop him from racing next year. There are some that do allow us to stop him from racing next year. And when a team principal is saying that, it's concerning. And when they talk to Ricardo and say, yeah, we got to talk about next year. It just breaks my heart, man. The guy who, you know, did the gang signs when he's overtaking Massa in first turn in Monzo. Doing a triple. Monzo. 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 <laughs> uh, doing a tri- Monzo. <laughs> winning in Monzo last year, man. <laughs> yeah. uh, doing a triple overtake in Baku. Winning uh, without an MGUK. And this guy is one of the greats if you talk about the previous five years. Yeah. He's got some of the best victories. China, when he did that incredible overtake on Bottas. But to see him like this. After Seb and... Uh... <laughs> Yeah, Hamilton. He was the one considered yeah, at one point thing. Uh, the, to be the next big thing, and then Max came along, and then uh, then it was Seb yeah. and Lewis, and then it was Max and Ricardo. Yeah, Max so, and Ricardo. Ricardo wasn't out of this uh, out of the scene or anything. Yeah. He was still regarded as yeah. a better driver in that case because that's he when, left the team because he felt like he couldn't be number two driver because yeah. he felt like he was yeah. that good. Yeah, and uh, that was a bad season as well for him after the Monaco Grand Prix because yeah. he didn't get any podiums, yeah. he didn't yeah. get any race figures. His car also DNFs. broke down like yeah. <laughs> 12, so many DNFs times. at that moment. Yeah, that was a uh, vintage Honda at the yeah. time. <laughs> <laughs> we still had problems with that. It wasn't Honda. It was, it was, Honda. Renault. It was Renault. Oh, sorry, it was Renault. Yes, yeah. next, next year, the Honda the next year. Yeah. Thank yeah. you. Yes, I just remembered Cyril Abitable and uh, yeah. <laughs> Christian Horner's love in tra- <laughs> love story <laughs> in that year. I just remember that. But dude, like when you look at your favorite drivers like um, Vettel. Hamilton, Alonso, they're getting old. Kimi's getting old. But none of them fell off this much. None of them were doing such poor racecraft. Even Renault was like a good time for him. Yeah, he got podiums. Yeah, yeah. Got First podiums. season was, yeah. was, wasn't was pretty great, but then the car was pretty shit. And the second season hmm. where the car could compete a little bit, there were podiums involved. And, and yeah, he's going to win here, but that's it. There is no other podiums to show for it. Uh, but even then last year I think and no I, other like great top 10 performances either like the end of last year was good where like there was a period of like six to eight races where where he did uh 
get more points than Russell by the end, at the uh, end Norris. of the season. Yeah, yeah. but uh, sorry, by Norris. But I don't know. It's it's fell again, again, uh, fell over again this season. And the biggest issue is that he's being uh, perf- like just destroyed in qualifying as well. Yeah, yeah. he's getting There's knocked no out in Q three, Q Q one, and Q two. Q Q. Q1. Q, 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 Q. <laughs> and the one race where he was doing well, he crashed into sign. So that was great. Yeah, just uh, it's, it's it's worrying to see that man. Um, we want to see the honey badger back up, but alongside sa- Williams, <laughs> dude, <laughs> that'll be depressing. <laughs> <laughs> that's not. Yeah, mm-hmm. would we'll want him to stay there for a bit, but yeah, where do you think he could go? I, I don't know. If there's anyone, no seat. I don't think any team. Latifi will won't stay. No, but Latifi will be replaced by Nick DeVries. They want a young driver there. Mercedes, maybe will, Williams, Merce- maybe Mercedes will, says we want like more experienced one. Maybe but can back. they afford him? He's not going. How much yeah. of a pay cut? I mean, is he at, take? yeah, at that Ricardo point, is an expensive driver, also. Yeah, but at that point, he's had it, two really big contracts. It comes down to the fact that you have a seat in F1 or not. Yeah, if there's no other seat, yeah. he can't. I don't. I don't see him going back to Red Bull with Checo performing really well. Yeah, no way. That's not Check, happening. Checo, Checo won the race, won guys. The race. <laughs> <laughs> um, beyond that, no. Think about it. His contract is like thirty mil. So that's very close to Lewis numbers, Max yeah. Verstappen numbers, because he was that good before. Yeah. Um, so I don't know but if obviously McLaren's also going to be like we pay him this much and this is this is what he's providing. Getting, so. You can't blame them as well. Yeah. You exactly. really can't. Yeah. It sucks that they have to talk like this, but you can't blame them. This is how it is. F one's a cruel sport. Cruel sport. So, but beyond that, I think there wasn't much <laughs> to talk about in the race, except or he goes to Haas and they <laughs> kick Mick out. <laughs> Again, like, what's he gonna do? Like, take one million, two million, <laughs> five million at best. Haas to, चलो बिल्कुल millions maybe. Haas to शायद बिल्कुल afford नहीं कर सकता. Haas तो हार्ड. Yeah, I mean they've had a pretty big uh, <laughs> uh, payments to pay this year so yeah, far. Yeah. <laughs> um, but beyond that, I think the greatest part of the race for me was that it's kind of redemption for my boy Checo. For last yeah. week, yeah. because last week we talked about this, y'all couldn't hear it. We went really <laughs> deep into the whole Checo thing. We were so, really pissed about just it. Just to summarize it, we think Checo deserved to have a fight. Yes, Pe- uh, Verstappen could have overtaken him easily because he was on fresher tires, blah blah blah, whatever. But he deserved it. It's too early in the championship, and this yeah. proves it was too early because he's on- he's only twenty five points behind the f- uh, yeah. the lead. And he had Max's number throughout the weekend. It was FP one, FP two, FP three, qualifying, qualifying. Everything in the Just, race, he was never behind Max. Uh, Max didn't even get much very yeah. close to him. No, uh, throughout the entire. Pe- Perez like, was quite start. ahead, like two, yeah. three seconds ahead, exactly, constantly even at the start. So there was just something about the car uh, for Monaco where you couldn't put your finger on it. Why Max couldn't get his hand on top of it? Uh, but Perez was in some vengeance mode this this weekend. And know? it's it's good to hear that he said that they talked about it. Yeah, that they've understood what the situation is, which. I hope now Perez is 15 points behind in the championship. He's right there uh, the compared to Max and then 6 points behind Charles. He's uh, right so there. So he's in the championship contention now. Uh, and uh yeah, you know. right. So exactly so can you imagine a Checo Perez fighting for world championship? Dude, that'd be incredible. Um on the other side you have another Spanish speaking driver who <laughs> is still behind Russell in the points by the way. Yeah. By one point. <laughs> uh which i hopefully he gets with another consecutive p2 and p2 monaco yeah exactly another p2 and he was disappointed after the race as compared to checo who was you know obviously jubilant about yeah. winning the monaco grand prix um, I mean, yeah they were so close they uh, just couldn't overtake he's had a bunch of p2s in formula 1 now that's like five or six p2s and at least no win without a win forget about no win he also doesn't have a pole position yeah, yeah. checo has a pole, pole position yeah. he got in the second race jeda yeah. And he did really well there. By and the way, also Charles matched uh, pole positions with Max. Like they have the same pole positions now. Max mm-hmm. and this Charles. season, like or overall, overall. overall. overall yeah. But the, the the point I like to make is the conversion of those poles. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That. Uh, how many fewer race wins does Leclerc, Leclerc have compared has. to Verstappen, who has okay. far more race wins? Yeah. yeah. I mean, he's passed his uh, future father-in-law, whatever, <laughs> uh, in race victories. He's got like he's got twenty-five. <laughs> I'm sorry, Daniel Kvyat. <laughs> uh, but yeah, I think I just feel like Ferrari need to come back strong in Baku next year. And Baku next year, next week. No, sorry, <laughs> next race, not even next week. I, I've given up on Ferrari. Both right? wrong. <laughs> I was not even next week, bro. Uh, but bro, like Leclerc again. When you think about Baku, you think about Leclerc crashing <laughs> in the castle <laughs> section. Oh, I, so am I, I am so stupid. I am so stupid. He was like, "You are stupid." <laughs> <laughs> yeah, he was going off on the mic. It was incredible. But uh, I just want to sign off on the fact that Checo 
Loved it. He Great. Could. What a performance. Yeah. He deserved this race yeah. victory. And I think they should let him race. Let your drivers Definitely. race Red Bull. You never know. He crashed yesterday. You and never then he won today. Yeah. Good. That's a very good point. Despite the crash, I give him a 9 out of 10 for this yeah. weekend. Definitely. Phenomenal. That crash was a bit, you know, yeah. a big blunder. Yeah. Uh, same with Alonso as well, by the way. He just went yeah, into... Yeah, they just... <laughs> again, didn't show really that. bad theory direction. They didn't even just show <laughs> the, the Alonso crash. Yeah, they, for the first second, they just showed him. They're like, oh, let's go back to science. Yeah. <laughs> also, I love how science wanted to make sure he hit that red yeah. ball. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> He's like... <"Ta." laughs> okay just yeah the rear tire like a kiss but <laughs> it wasn't if I a can kiss damage bro. the red bull i just i just it wasn't it. a kiss it was a punch <laughs> like it was a bump man he got it he, he broke the tire <laughs> um but i think it was a great weekend for checo regardless of that leclerc definitely i still think he gets, deserves a 10 out of 10 this yeah. weekend um yeah he did all he could he did everything he could he did everything that was on ferrari zero out of 10 <laughs> ferrari zero out of 10 yet again um failing their number one driver this ain't the first time they messed up Seth at Monaco. And might not be the last time they messed up. <laughs> <laughs> if you're oh, a no. Oh, no. Oh, mamma mia. <laughs> mamma mia, yeah, exactly. When, when you put it that way, <laughs> I'm not even sad. I'm scared. <laughs> um, so, yeah, I mean, if you talk about the construction... This might turn into a two-horse race. I'm sorry, I'm cutting you off. No, it's This okay. might turn into a two-horse race. And a two-horse race between Max and Checo. <laughs> There's well, no Ferrari involved. <laughs> I mean, it's, I hope it's not like Vettel versus Weber, meaning that Vettel just destroys <laughs> Weber. We want a close racing between that. Uh, but I wanted to pinpoint the constructors where it was close there. Now it's not close. Yeah, it's about 36, 30 36, yeah, 36, 36 points. points. So 235 guys. for Red Bull, 199 for Ferrari. Oh my God, guys. <laughs> you were winning this. Can you remember <laughs> the lead that they had? Yeah. <laughs> you remember that both cars... This was four races ago. <laughs> Do you remember the first race? Both Red Bulls DNF'd. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Both Red Bulls. And they're ahead in the constructors. So Ferrari have had one DNF due to engine issues. Yeah. And the rest is science. <laughs> and they have had three. <laughs> three. Three DNFs. Yeah. Max's second DNF. They've had three DNFs. Exactly. Yeah, and they're exactly. still 36 points ahead. That is, it just shows that Ferrari need to get on top of this, yeah. man. They need to get this. This shows that there's there are two teams in this championship. And one of them has way more experience and uh, know how of how to cope up with the pressure of being a top tier team. It feels like Ferrari can't handle that pressure. It feels like this is and this is the an antithesis of, of a Ferrari team where the Ferrari team is the team that knows how to handle pressure, how yeah. to fight for championships, how to win championships, how to make sure that, you know, that you cripple the opposition just by your the sheer stature of the team that you are. I mean, and that's the exact thing that's happening to them with Red Bull. It feels like they're crumbling under pressure because of Red Bull. Yeah, I mean, last time it was Total Wolf pressuring them. This yeah. time it's Christian Horner and his pals. Yeah. Um, and the thing is, you mentioned the the pedigree of Ferrari yeah. and the fact that in the prior prior years they were the ones to be afraid of, right? I do think that had to do with the leadership, though. France, uh, um, yeah. uh, they had obviously. I'm sorry, I'm forgetting entirely. Braun. Braun, uh, they, had Ross Braun they had Ross Braun GP. They had Braun GP. <laughs> Ross Braun and they had uh, the previous president of FIA. I forget any, my mind. No, not Stefan. Uh, Franz Toss or something like that. Franz Toss. No, that's, that, that's, that's the Alpha Tauri. That's the Alpha Tauri guy. That's the Alpha Tauri guy. They're similar names. Short French guy. <laughs> Let's go with that. Uh, anyway, uh, basically, that was a team that was to be feared. I don't think that's a team anymore. Yeah. You have Matteo Benotto. Slow, but then on. <laughs> it's not exactly the same team anymore that you had at that time. Uh, Fry are no longer that pedigree anymore because of the last 15 years. Because of the last ways how they've lost championships. So this is the year to make it. And like Anusha said, they've got the fastest car. They can do it. This is their year. If they don't do it, like, what are they going to do next year? Yeah, you're gone. Every year we hear this. Ferrari are back. Ferrari is really fast. Sp Spain testing really good for them. And then you go on and like Ferrari are nowhere. Slow button on. <laughs> it's it's dreadful. But, you know, that's pretty much what the race was. I want to get down with two things we're going to do now. So one race prediction predictions for the race next week. <laughs> Not next so week. Bad next, at this. <laughs> next race. We're so, no, sorry. It's shameful how bad we are at this. No, what no, was our last yeah. predictions? We... Oh, uh, the race predictions? Uh, I had I just, Charles. Uh, yeah, Charles. We had Charles. <laughs> yeah, we had Charles. Yeah, we had Charles. We had Charles. I just remember what it was. It was Charles, Verstappen, P2. Both of them didn't happen. And then P3, guess what we said? Mercedes. A Mercedes driver. <laughs> 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 I 
<laughs> I'm some some odd reason we give Mercedes a lot of thing that they will come on the podium somehow some way they are going there. just to get back to Mercedes for a second George Russell seventh race in a row in the top, top five. five what's up also beating signs in the championship still seven races into the season that's George Russell in a Mercedes is beating Carlos Sainz that's bad that's abysmal uh also they're both with less in their career <laughs> <laughs> yes that's true as well and they both have p2s as their highest finishes yep. <laughs> uh and he did that in the williams so and they both don't have a pole position <laughs> <laughs> exactly in fact i'd say he had a closer chance of getting pole <laughs> last year they than carlos ever has he led the same exact amount of laps in a race oh my probably. god probably yeah that's true no maybe not But anyway, let's get in with our predictions, our very poor predictions for Baku. What are we guys thinking? <laughs> are we going to see Baku's like a similar a similar vibe. It's a street circuit. Yeah. Uh Charles Max Perez. Charles Max Perez. Yeah. Okay. I think we return to the the usual top 2. It's a top yeah. speed track as well. The problem is with the long straight in Baku. So that's really going to come down to who has the top line yeah, speed there. Yeah, so that's there. why I'm getting confused. Uh Mercedes uh, might also if they get on top of that as well uh be fast there too. <laughs> Red mean, Bull pretty again. good there last year also. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, Red uh, Bull top speed already we've known they're good so um it's a little I think wishy-washy. I think it's going to go to Verstappen. You going to Verstappen? Yeah. Die burst. <laughs> I think I think Charles for a pole and then Verstappen for the win. Oh, you know what I'm going to do? Oh, I'm going to go for wishful thinking here. Science. No, fuck that. <laughs> uh, no, I wish <laughs> that's very wishful thinking, bro. <laughs> Lewis I'm, Hamilton. No, I'm going for George. Paris. Okay, Paris. Paris oh, back to back victory yes. first time in his career. I'm thinking Paris comes back. I mean, back. he won Azerbaijan last time. He's won Azerbaijan before. He's been I on, mean, circumstances. He's been bro. on the podium more than any of the driver there. Uh, remember that? Really? Oh, he was there. Yeah. Force when Vettel had his moment, and then he also had that yeah. previous time. Um, he was when oh, Nico Rosberg. Vettel had his moment. <laughs> <laughs> you remember that, bro? The lock up in turn one. Yeah, exactly. Um, so that I'm was think- a race win. Yeah, I'm. I'm expecting a Red Bull one two. I'm. I'm in devastated <laughs> next week when I realize I'm so wrong. But I'm expecting a Red Bull one two, and I'm thinking Leclerc comes P three. So that's my prediction for Ooh, the okay. for the next race. So we're going Charles. Yeah, I I I, th- I think my one two is the other way around. For Stappen Paris. Yeah. Okay. That's a de- that's a, that's a more. Uh, I still believe in Charles. Charles. Still believe in Charles. So my only thing is the castle section might be where you know Fry might be better. <laughs> that's gonna be Fry's. Uh, that's gonna be Fry's sector. Uh, that's why I feel like Fry might get pole as well. Mm-hmm. Uh, because uh, both teams can get DRS in in qualifying also. But the Red Bull has a good race space. I it has agree. good race pace. It has good uh, straight line speed as well. But I feel like pole Ajega, and that's ah, why pole pole, pole will be fries. Especially you know with with the qualifying streak that uh, where Mag, uh, like Charles that. Charles is going on. Yeah. Uh, if if you saw his qualifying laps, it, they were perfection. Yeah. Safe I mean that efficient. that Monaco one. Poof, yeah. My God, and even the Spain one. Uh, and the Monaco one that didn't even get completed. <laughs> that was gonna be a belter. No one was going to beat his current time as well. Yeah. I could guarantee it. No one was happy. No, no way. Uh, the fact that he was three tenths already up in sector yeah. one, man, it's incredible. But Baku is a place where you can overtake. Yep. Baku is yeah. a place where safety cars happen. Yeah. Baku is a place where the tires get destroyed. Yeah. Baku is a place where first lap chaos happens. Baku is a place where crashes happen. Baku is a place where everything happens. Uh, well, we always well. say, "Well done, Baku." uh after the second race that happened there the first race was dreadful it was really boring but after that Baku was gives us an exciting race so you never know we might see an extremely weird podium again as yeah, we have over the last no years doubt, no doubt so i'm hoping for that before we stop i have one more thing we're going to do we're going to predict three things i know it's copying wtf1 but i don't care <laughs> three things predict that's going to happen in specific things that are going to happen at Baku i'll start off a williams crashes <laughs> okay that happened this race as well <laughs> uh to be pointed as a uh, album got beat by latifi again yeah <laughs> yes really. album dnf prior to that album was getting a penalty yeah. he was going off track as well so we're going for williams uh crashing yeah what's your two other two predictions hmm let me think anush what's your first one yeah i need to think all right i'll go with mine first yeah. i'm going for two safety cars okay all right i'm going for one red uh red flag and i'm going for an alfa romeo bottas in p4 
Okay, interesting. Oh. oh. Yeah, yeah, I have a feeling something Bottas can do something this time. Okay. And it's oh. a track that he likes. Yeah, he's done well. Yeah, he's done well there. He's so, well. red flag, two red flags. Uh, so no, that, two safety cars, one red flag. Yeah, so, okay, so you would, would couple that in one. Uh, no, no, those are three different three things. Three different things, yes. all right. So, uh, two separate things. Okay, so a red flag, Sebastian in the points, because I feel like Baku. Get more specific, be, where would you finish? Uh, P10? Nine. P9. P9, all right. Yeah, somewhere, like, I feel like Baku might just be, was that, uh, Aston Martin, I mean, we didn't talk about Aston Martin there, but Seb had a good race overall. He just, the strategy is kind of, screwed him up we actually did yeah. talk about him <laughs> for a little bit yeah we did talk about a little bit, bit yeah. but um he beat stroll quite confidently yeah, yeah. qualifying if anyone, if anyone wants to matter about uh, that. third prediction okay zarar you go yeah. <laughs> uh so a uh, williams crashes a uh, williams crashes uh we get an aston martin seb in the top seven or top Top six. <laughs> Top seven. He could be P1. It's going to be real sick You know, he did get a podium last time yeah. in an Aston yep. Martin. You yep. never know. Yep. Yep. Uh, What's the third and, one? And uh, my third prediction is that we will have Gasly back in the points. Oh, and he deserves it. He yeah. deserves, He didn't get it this time. He was in P11 yeah. thanks to Ocon's penalty, but not enough for points, of course. Uh, do you, did you think of a third yeah, prediction? Someone's going to crash on the cast section Ooh. throughout the weekend. Throughout the weekend or oh, just on the on, race? Yeah, you, can, you, gotta, you gotta be specific. <laughs> say, let's wise. say the race. All right, race. Let's go for the race. Yeah, race. And All that's right. going to cause a red flag for me. <laughs> 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 that's where I get my red flag. Because yep. <laughs> there's no way you can clear yeah, that yeah, without yeah. a red flag. Uh, I like this, guys. This was fun. Uh, if you liked it, please subscribe. Leave a comment. Uh, join our F1 Fantasy League. Follow Zadar Khan. Follow News Zirk. Or don't join our F1 Fantasy League. We don't even. I didn't change us. Don't. Just don't join it. If anyone cares, <laughs> I don't want the pressure of other people coming in. I don't want to play. It. No, no. It's stop too, saying that. Of course, join. <laughs> have you seen the 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 web app? No. Yeah, that. But have comparatively, have you seen FPL, the football? Yeah, I know it's, yeah, much, it's better. much better. We have had podcasts on on the mic where we have a person yeah. talking entirely it's just so about that. so much better. I know it's much better. I know it's a pain in the ass to even open because it doesn't yeah. even log in properly. Yeah, I mean, I'm Formula done. 1, you guys can have a good op- opportunity, man, guys. Yeah, you've made all it. these mobile apps yeah. with games. Yeah. Like, can you just fix this? This yeah. is very easy. It's just a UI you have to make. But anyway, um, please uh, subscribe, like it, everything. And uh, we'll see you next time when the checker flag drops in Baku. Bye.